he saw something blue flash over the bus. It was a great blue heron, and it landed on the shore and began to search for fish. And Carlos saw a story in the river. Long ago, a river ran wild through a land of towering trees. <laughs> High in the hills, she started out as a small and sparkling spring, but she grew as the streams and creeks joined her flowing. She loved the trees and the animals that frolicked and drank in her waters. And here in the Piedmont, she became a mighty river. Geese rested here on their journeys. Owls hunted from the banks. Deer drank together in the shallow waters. And there were bears, huge bears. Now the possums raise their young in the branches of trees. The foxes raise theirs in the hollow trunks. lived here too. The Sisipaha built a village in its valley. They gathered grasses from the banks to thatch their huts and houses. In the trees they cut rings around the bark so that the trees died and lost their leaves. And in these clearings the sunlight reached the ground and there they planted corn, squash, and beans, the three sisters. They rode on the river in canoes. And when the Indians hunted in the forest or caught fish in the river, they only killed what they needed for their food and their clothing. And they thanked the forest creatures for their lives. The people lived in the valley for generations and they looked to the river for food, water, beauty and, and life itself. Now the next day, as the bus rolled down the big hill, Carlos looked for the heron beneath the river's trees. But he didn't see it, and instead he saw a different animal. It looked like it was wearing a mask and it was washing something. <laughs> and
And before Carlos's eyes, the river story started up again. Now different people had come to the valley. But like the Indians before them, they loved the river for its plentiful water and wildlife. <sighs> they chopped down trees. to plow and plant open fields of wheat. Come, ye thankful people, come. Raise the song of harvest home. And to raise their animals. Let's see, they had cows. Oh, yeah. And geese. And pigs. And they had another animal. It was a, uh, what was that? Chickens. Yeah. <laughs> They built mills along the river. And the flowing water turned the wheels. They ground the wheat into flour. But these settlers feared the darkness of the forest. So they cut the wilderness back from their villages. Years passed, and the Hall River still flowed wild and free and people seeking freedom from slavery used the river as a path. They followed the Big Dipper, which they called the Drinking Gourd, for its stars pointed the way north to freedom. Follow the Drinking Gourd, follow the Drinking Gourd, for the old man's waiting for to carry you to freedom if you follow the Drinking Gourd. Now fish still swam from bank to bank. Oh. The deer still came to drink from the waters. Frogs leapt. And now the people built new kinds of mills to turn cotton into thread. And to weave that thread into cloth. The mills dyed the cloth, and they dumped the leftover dye and fiber right into the Haw River. And as the mills dyed the cloth, red, blue, green, yellow, the river ran whatever color the cloth was dyed. More and more people came to live in the valley, and life changed. They cleared more land to do their buildings. And without the plant's roots gripping the earth, the soil washed off into the river, and the river became sick, and the plants and the animals became sick too. There were fewer and fewer fish, and fewer and fewer birds stopped by on their migrations. 
Honk. 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 And even the people stopped seeing the river that struggled silently beneath their lives and the lives of the plants and animals. But today, Carlos is going on a field trip. The bus is rolling down the big hill. And just as the bus reaches the bridge at the bottom of the hill, why some kid throws an empty water bottle right out the window. Hey, that's the way to the river. Now down below, Carlos sees people who care for the river. They're wearing gloves. They're carrying trash bags. They're picking up garbage and checking for anything unusual. They share their information with a river watch group that's got critter ID sheets and little nets. They're measuring the health of the water by catching critters and finding out what lives in it. And they send what they find out to a scientist in a lab who analyzes their data and records the information to see if the water quality is improving. And he sends what he finds out to a, an environmental group who spread the word with letters and books, teaching and leading hikes and boat trips on the river. Carlos sees other people down below with protest signs and petitions. They demand that lawmakers pass laws to keep the factories from putting pollution into the river. Laws that keep the buildings farther back from the river. And these laws give the river space to breathe and give the plants and soil time to suck up the pollutants. And that keeps the pollution out of the river. Where the red mud had been, Carlos sees people plant native grasses and trees. And he sees the river begin to flow clean again. People explore its currents and canoes again. People can go fishing again. Whoa, that one got away. <laughs> And they can even go swimming. Oh, ha <laughs> ha, yippee, sploosh. <laughs> and when Carlos's river vision fades, he finds himself, well, right here, watching a puppet show, learning about his river, where it comes from and where it goes, how it affects his life and how he affects it and sitting here with his friends and learning ways that they can care for their river and getting ready to sing a song. Puppet show.